Remember the 2018 Thailand cave rescue? This is Tom Luang Cave. Let's go check it out. You know, when we put Thailand on our list of places to visit, this was probably at the top of my bucket list. I've been wanting to come to Tom Luang Cave ever since all of that happened. If you're like me, then in June of 2018, up into July, basically all you followed on television was the rescue of these kids. And the fact that so many countries helped out and the fact that after all that time the kids were fine along with their coach and they were able to successfully get them out it was one thing it was a monumental task to even find them and for them to be in good spirits and for them to i'm sure you've all seen the videos of them being found it's just the most incredible story i think i've ever seen probably thought the same way by a lot of other people too especially in hollywood where they've made like however many documentaries on the rescue and recovery of these children but it shows the will of the people and a testament to the people here that they would raise kids to be able to handle a situation like that. Yeah, those kids are the strongest people you'll ever, ever see in any situation to be able to come out of that alive and with smiles on their faces. It's just a remarkable story. So this just kind of goes to show you how deep they were in the cave. So we are right here at the entrance and they went all the way through these chambers, 492 meters, 1600 meters, and then all the way down past the Pattaya Beach spot, which is over 2,000 meters in, all the way down to where they were found right here, 2,315 meters from the cave entrance. They've also got a little area over here of a lot of the equipment that was used for that almost month that it took from the boys getting lost to getting retrieved. So like some of the soccer jerseys and the cables, the mask, the diving mask, and the helmets. And then I'm guessing these are some of the kids' stuff, the bicycles, the backpacks, the, you know, the soccer ball and sandals and soccer shoes. I'm sure we're probably not able to go all the way back to where the kids were found because A, that's very, very deep. It's and difficult. B, because, yeah, and B, because you never know when weather's gonna move in. We're here during the dry season and it is definitely dry, but you can never be too careful, never be too safe. It's cool to be able to be in this cave. There's an air of respect that you kind of feel where you're like, hey, you know, this is beautiful, but it can be dangerous, you know? Trey's a little chicken butt, so I'm gonna go up there. <laughs> okay, be careful. These steps get pretty steep and they're not exactly uh, steps, honestly. So this is the show cave, and I'm honestly not totally sure where I'm allowed to go and where I'm not allowed to go. Also, I feel like I'm talking really loud because it's echoing so much in here. Why is it so quiet? This is incredible. It looks like just a viewpoint of this cave. There's also a few little statues up here that people have left flowers and offerings for, so that's really all that's up here. Want to go deeper into the cave? I do. Okay. Let's go. Get a little bit low on that one. What do you think, Hannah? It was cold up there, and now it's starting to get warmer and warmer as we go further into the cave. Honestly, these steps weren't here when those little boys came through. I think they were. You think? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's why I want to know. Get in the comments if you know. <laughs> One thing that's kind of crazy is it's dry season here currently, but the inside of this cave is wet. There's constantly water dripping through the cracks and through the holes. Can't even imagine how it was during the flash flood when the boys were in the back. I mean, this is, this seems super wet and kind of eerie. It's spooky and it's beautiful, but it's also kind of spooky. So this area was kind of a staging area. This was like a conference table and there's a medical table right there it says medical unit this is just past chamber one 
And unfortunately, this is as far as we can go from what it looks like, because there's a little stone, there's a little metal gate right there. And then right here kind of blocks you from walking down the steps. So we'll respect the rules and not go any further. And to be honest with you, I believe you continue to go down that way and it just doesn't look very inviting. So <laughs> I think we'll probably hold off on going any further. Another thing that's really a testament to the knowledge of the, the boys and the coach is that a lot of these little, I guess they're stalagmites. If you know, then let us know in the comments exactly. But a lot of them have water dripping off. And after being in the cave for, you know, days on end, you get extremely thirsty. And the coach made sure to tell the boys and made sure that they drink the water that's dripping off of these stalagmites, which also helped keep them healthy. So while most would consider this a resounding success story and a story of triumph, unfortunately there was a fatality in the process of uh, retrieving the boys. There was a, a Thai Navy SEAL by the name of Sam. I think his name is actually Saman, but I think they call him Sam. He ended up passing away in the process of trying to help get the boys out. So we're going to go and see the statue that is for him because while this is a remarkable story and a story of a happy ending at the end there is you know an air of, of sadness behind it so if you look at the statue you've got Sam who is the diver that passed away and at his feet you've got the amount of boys I think there were 12 boys or 13 boys including the coach they're in the form of little wild boars because the team name was the wild boars in remembrance of him and the role that he played in helping those boys get out of the cave To be honest, I can't really blame Hannah for, you know, feeling emotions in here and stuff because it was it was nuts back then and it's still nuts now. And the fact that they were able to get all those boys out alive is just remarkable. I think being here is kind of surreal. We watched it a lot when we were back home, like Trey said, and kind of put pieces of the story together that we just saw on TV. I think that the exhibition hall here and also the Thai people have really done a great job at informing the public and informing people that come here about the story and everyone involved. I do get emotional about these things, but it was just a really special story and it really is just everybody coming together to help this soccer team and, or this football team, sorry, <laughs> this football team and it was just, it's a really special story. This kind of tells the story in characters of the Thai rescue. So at the beginning you have where they left their bikes, their parents, the family, and then it kind of goes through chamber by chamber of the story and what happened. We're translating a lot of the pictures um, and the text so that we can get the full story because this is, this is here for a reason. And this is obviously a smaller version. A smaller cave. version of the cave, <laughs> yeah. yes. area that has water and does not dry up. So hopefully this was informative and it maybe gave you a little bit of closure as to what has happened here with the cave since the Thailand cave rescue. This exhibit is absolutely beautiful. It's got a beautiful statue that pays tribute to Sam, the person that lost his life in the process of this remarkable story. I hope you took something from this and hopefully it inspires you to come over here into the north of Thailand and come and see this cave for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in a couple days when we're exploring something else in Thailand. Take care.